celebrate the life and mourn the passing of Robert oh. Ashley Brayshaw. And do you can't hear me? Uh-uh. Turn up a little bit. Yeah, she wear she Today's service will be different. It was originally planned as a graveside service at St. Luke Cemetery, but due to the rainy forecast, uh, we decided to have it here in this beautiful chapel. The family would like to thank everyone for being here. Your attendance is a testimony of the love for your, the departed family member and a statement of support to the family in this sad time. Rob's wife, Stephanie, and two sons couldn't make it today. They'll be coming in November, I understand. Um, they, they provided some flowers. I just looked at them earlier. Out of respect for the family and the sanctity of the service, I ask that you put your cell phones on vibrate or off. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you today at this sad occasion. We know that you are all powerful and all knowing. And we know you hold the answer to everything. We ask that you would bless us with your Holy Spirit here, that we may feel the presence of the Lord in this group. That, Lord, we would seek your wisdom as we mourn this death and we take each step forward in our lives. Be with us today. In thy name we ask this. Amen. Robert Ashley Brayshaw was born on May the 3rd, 1975, in Columbus, Georgia. He was Jeannie and John's firstborn. And I'm speaking as if we have people here that don't know that, but I didn't know who might attend. So bear with me. As he grew older, he preferred to be called Rob. I'm told that he liked to march to the beat of his own drum, to do things his way, to make his own opportunities. He had a passion for life, a thirst for adventure, and a hunger for discovery. At the early age of four, he exhibited talents in being what I would call an acquisition specialist. The family was living in Alabama. Jeannie was expecting her second child, Mike. They were all in a maternity shop. Michael, Mary Lynn, and their two-year-old son, Dwight, were in the shop with them. When they entered the shop, there was this huge display of a stroller at the very front of the store. The store people really wanted to sell a lot of stuff. Had a big umbrella tied to the top. It had a lot of infants clothing on, hanging on the side. As the adults perused around the store, one of the clerks suddenly yelled, someone stole a stroller display. Everyone ran out of the shop and saw the stroller rolling down the mall in the direction of a large mortar fight. Four-year-old Rob had put two-year-old Dwight in the stroller and the two were burning road towards that fight. John apprehended the suspects and returned the stroller to the store. Rob was also interested and had a knack for building and fixing things. At the age of seven, Rob exhibited his talents in mechanical engineering. His grandmother, Jean, had this large job she was working on for uh, interior decorator, a drapery job. 
which involved using her sewing machine. She was in the middle of the job. She walked in the room where she worked at and Rob had disassembled the sewing machine. Of course, she was worried and excited, but Rob just patiently put the sewing machine back together and Gene said it never worked as good as it did at, until after he put it back together. Rob always had a thought for his family and his friends and his loved ones. He liked to look after his little brother. He put a Lego set together, an airport Lego set, so Mike could play with it. During his employment, as a property manager with a company in Florida, he enjoyed helping the maintenance department on a regular basis. He was in charge, but he still liked to get involved. He was thoughtful and tried to comfort his family and those he loved on occasion. He bought Michael Teddy Ruxman Bear on his 10th birthday. For those of you that don't know, that was a bear that had batteries and had cassettes and would talk to you, supposedly. And many other memories, too, too many to share today. And I encourage you to read the obituary that Mike so elegantly wrote. You have a copy in your handout. In 1912, C. Austin Mills, while waiting for a film to develop, he was a pharmacist at a pharmacy. He picked his Bible, he opened his Bible, and it fell open to Matthew 20. He was so moved by the story of Mary going to the garden to visit the tomb of Jesus, he wrote the hymn in the garden. And I'd like for Lou to come up now, and she I gonna, would like to lead you in this song. We're going to try it. <laughs> we don't have an accompanist, so this is going to be a... Uh, oh, that's a bad glare. Yeah. Yeah. Now I can see this. All right, you got to start it. I hope we got to be good. Did you say it? Yeah. I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear, falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we share we bear none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their sea
with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I had a few scriptures I want to share with you uh, today. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John 10, 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then one of Rob's favorites. Psalm 23, 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I can't take your burden from you as an individual, John and Jean and Mike and the rest of the family. We'll miss Rob. He's like each one of us. He made a significant impact on this earth. All of us are different. All of us make our own impact on this earth. Some may say, I wonder why he left us at 49 years of age. God knows. And if we seek God's wisdom and we believe in him and we ask his forgiveness and believe he's forgiven us, one day we can ask and he'll tell us. He knows better than any of us or anything what is best for us. Suffering is something that nobody should have to bear. I want to go to heaven because I want to help Jesus come back on this earth and defeat Satan so that nobody else will suffer and have to bear this pain. Please pray for the family, the extended family members, and keep them constantly in your prayers. Reach out to them with love. John, Jeannie, I love you. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity. I would ask that if you need anything, if you need a prayer, or you need to talk to anybody, you know you can call me. Reach out, each of us, let's reach out and love each other. Let's bow our heads for closing prayer. O oh, Heavenly Father, we seek your wisdom. We seek your wisdom in knowing how to walk each day. We're in a hurry. We want to get things done. Please give us the understanding and the interest in slowing things down and appreciating that that we have. For tomorrow we may not have it. 
Lord, bless us all as we depart here. Keep us safe until we see each other again. In the holy name we ask. Amen. Amen. And that concludes the service.